Are you feeling overwhelmed as a healthcare leader with a brilliant idea but struggling to bring it to life? Don't worry, you're not alone. Keep listening to discover how you can navigate through common obstacles and establish a strong foundation in the eight fundamental areas of business to ensure the success of your healthcare innovation. Welcome to Provider's Edge, the podcast that helps healthcare entrepreneurs and executives like you break down barriers and control your life, control your business, and control your future. With me, your host, Sabrina Rumbach, a recovered clinician and a business deal catalyst. Let's rewrite the rules and create a positive social impact while increasing your profitability. As a healthcare leader, you have a vision of how you can revolutionize this industry and improve how we deliver care or perhaps how we are working with our colleagues. However, the road to success is usually difficult with many different obstacles that can prevent you from achieving your goal. Without a solid foundation, these Obstacles can become instrumental, preventing you from realizing your full potential and truly creating the impact with millions of people's lives. One of the biggest challenges that healthcare leaders are facing is lacking of marketing research. Without a clear direction of understanding your target audience and their needs, you might struggle to position yourself as the authority in the space and deliver a effective service. Additionally, you might miss the opportunity to capitalize on emerging trends, leaving you at a disadvantage comparing to your competitors. These specific market research can be taxing and be time consuming to really understand the psychological behavior of your buyers, yes, it's very different from how we are practicing medicine where people are already coming into your clinic. However, when we're putting on to that authority and saw leadership hat, we have to think about how are we uniquely different in solving this problem that's not already being worked on by many other people? And if so, how are you positioning yourself in that unique way, just slightly better than anybody else? We don't have to be perfect. Another common problem is the lack of funding. Most time when you need to ask for funding, the upside is that you have to have some type of service planned out or protocol with a device or a digital platform to even show. And secure funding is critical to turning your healthcare idea into a reality. but. Without a solid business plan, most of the investors cannot just buy into a pure idea that they are not sure when this thing will actually go into series A, B, C and creating revenue into this idea that they are putting their money on. So attracting the right investors is also very critical. With your market research, it can help you to position yourself as someone not only have the knowledge, but have the understanding. This can leave you struggling to cover the cost of production design, having a great team to manage your business, manufacturing, marketing, limit your ability to scale and grow your healthcare venture. Now, finally, also legal and regulatory compliance is huge in the healthcare space, especially in the U.S. and also the uh, European and other countries as well. The healthcare industry is heavily regulated. Understanding the payer model, the insurance model, or perhaps this is a completed cash paid model, but what can you say? How do you represent yourself? Do you have to go through FDA? All different type of legal aspect and additionally, to protect your intellectual property, you also need to have a strong legal department to support you and not being challenging later on and leaving your healthcare venture 
vulnerable to infringement and other legal challenges. By understanding these challenges and take proactive steps to address them, you can establish a solid foundation for turning your healthcare ideas into a reality. In the next session of this episode, we'll discuss the most important steps to take to overcome these obstacles and achieving your goal. Our number one thing is market research. Conducting market research is a crucial first step. When you have any idea in mind, you do have to understand who do you really need help with. And that can be their age, their gender, their geographical location, their socioeconomic status, and their career profile, and then go down to what's the problem that relates to a specific thing. When you're thinking in healthcare, what is that health impacting? How big is this problem? Would people be willing to open up their wallet or spend time dealing with this problem and because it can be a very costly problem affecting not just personally but other people as well so conducting market research allow you to gain various insights on your target audience identifying emergent trends and analyzing customers behavior very crucially on their buying behavior and their own individual behavior with health changes and then adaptation. And those who are more fearful, of course, then you would need to take a different approach when you talk about your product and services uh, uh, versus other challenges out there. And also help you to determine the type of services to apply in wo what volume and determine pricing and potential target market. To conduct the effective market research, you need to determine and understand their preferences, their pain points, their expectations, and analyzing your competitors at the same time. What do your competitors in a similar market, similar problem area are solving? What type of programs and devices they have? And how are they comparable to other similar companies and compared to what you wanted to build. These additional analytics of your consumer trends can help you to identify emerging trends that you can capitalize on. So number one, identify your target audience. You need to understand their demographics, preferences, pain points, and your target audience to effectively position yourself as an expert. And number two is analyze your competitors by standing identify gaps that you can fill to put you and differentiate you on the next level of a company. And number three is gathering information and customer trends to stay up to date within the emerging customer trends to identify potential opportunities that you can capitalize on. Number four is gathering these data where you can focus from primary to secondary resources, such as surveys, focus group, online research. And something that I actually do for my clients is that we put them on one of my podcasts and then the intention of that show itself is very short, but we are crowdsourcing. It means we ask our audience to evaluate this specific tech company. What is your understanding after that episode broadcast what do you think is their level of innovation how creative and innovative is this company what do you think uh, as this company are they sustainable means if you truly believe in this uh, device or services whether it's a collaborator investor do you think it's sustainable to continue going and do you think it's uh, more in a way that also is a collaborative and um, that they are not trying to be beating out all the competition, which is healthcare is very fragmented. Everyone can help each other in different ways. And there's also sometimes not possible in cover all geographical territory. So there's so many different area. And then do they have, seems like I have a solid team. We all know any invention does not come by one person. That 
innovator still have to have someone to help them to convey the message and device their services into impact and then you have to at least have a third person to take these impact into a reality it means executioner someone who can really strategize a plan to make things happen now um, number five is you need to analyze all these data right and um and uh, analyze what you collect to identify the patterns opportunities and these market research can really help and second part is about product design once you have complete market research you can move to your product design this is a crucial step in turning your idea into a reality because once you have a product you have something sustainable to show then when you talk about it it becomes more intentional because it's backed up by something tangible and not just an idea but it also involves in creating protocols and testing your product in real life situation, having a clear understanding of your target audience so their need is matched and guiding their need while you're developing this product design. And sometimes it's also you have to have a clinical trial to go through that. So if you have your potential audience, right, clients up front to help you develop this clinical trial or product design, it's much easier once it's already set and then you go into market. Of course, it does have several steps. Um, number one is conceptualization, develop a clear product vision and generate ideas. Number two is prototyping, creating a rough version of your product and test it out, refine the design as you go, as you have more investors. Number three is testing, um, having a group of people to do a pilot, to gather some feedback and information on what's the user experience uh, from it and make changes accordingly. And number four, then you're thinking about contacting different manufacturer when you are eventually getting funding and can produce in mass quantity. Where are these factors that can support you and giving the exact specific combination of the structure side of materials to make uh, your devices? Or perhaps you are someone who has a digital product then is about connecting to a tech app developing company. So having these conversations is great to at least give you some quotes and understanding where you need to go. And of course, number five is a, a quality assessment, establishing and ensuring the process to ensure your product meets the highest level of standard need. So it's central to involve your target audience in the product design. And number three is, of course, everyone loves to talk about securing funding. With a well-designed product and a clear understanding of your market and protocol that you wanted to build, you can start seeking funding from your healthcare idea. Investors want to see you have a solid business plan. So do write this out in detail and financial projection. Perhaps you will already simultaneously, which we'll talk about, is having the accounting person who help you to solidify these. So it's crucial to have this information ready before seeking funding. And when you do seek funding, learn how to create a simple pitch deck. And also understand my biggest thing with leveraging and pitch your funding is some of these advisors are really good at putting the deck together and help you get through it. However, it's not just about having the set 20 minutes talk. You need to be able to bring that storyline and your projection down to a five minutes talk and all the way down to one minute. That one minute, you have to use it almost like an introduction of who you are, what you do in any networking event, and doesn't always see everyone as your investors, but see them as a collaborator. 
I always say any connection can be turned into a champion. Once they become a champion, then they're willing to open up their wallet and their network for you. And therefore, number one, you do have to develop a business plan. It's well crafted with details outlining your innovations, value proposition, target market, competition, and crucial projections. And number two is creating a financial projection, and developing a financial planning, including revenue, expenses, and profitability over short and long term, whatever that you're envisioning. And number four is pitch your idea. It's not too early to pitch. At least you can get some feedback from people on、uh, and building that relationship in general. Sometimes those relationship does take. At least a few months or even years to build until someone truly see your continuous growth, and then they will definitely buy into your idea and support you to go to the next level. And then it's about negotiating terms. These terms with potential advisors. Some people are taking out equity in different ways, safe notes, whatnot, to ensure that the deal is. Uh, equitable for both parties. There are several options available for healthcare entrepreneurs, including venture capital, angel investor, crowdfunding, and loans. And even podcasting can be used as crowdfunding ideas, which I have done、uh, strategize with.、Uh, A few companies as well. It's crucial to understand the differences between funding available and other requirements to determine the best options. And in addition to the need to have a clear understanding of your financial need and projection of to attract the right potential investors, because at the end of the day, they care about if they give you a lump sum of investment. What that money truly can do for your growth. What does this equals? Why? Thank you for listening for Providers Edge. Don't miss out any episode. Subscribe to our channel on your favorite podcast. If you're listening to us and if you're watching, subscribe to our channel、uh, where we airing this on Apple, Roku, and Fire TV, as well as on. Our YouTube and LinkedIn.、Uh, together, we can rewrite the rules for your healthcare business and create a positive social impact in the healthcare industry. All right, number four is information technology. In today's digital world, IT plays a crucial way in identifying the right tools and systems that you need to keep your operation. In a optimal state, I ensure that your data security is compliant and with applicable regulations. IT can be a way that you schedule appointments with your potential clients versus tracking clients or、uh, strategic partners. Even myself, I use Active Campaign for most of, of my relationship and background building with different tags, so I can find the right resource, the right people right away when I'm in conversation with someone. So, number one, IT needs identify the specific tools and systems. That you will need to support your operations. I would say you need to have a, a online calendar of various ways instead of going back and forth. That's too much of time spent and not effective. Number two, evaluating vendors, evaluating technology vendors based on their ease of use, capability, integration, scalability, security. Number three, implementing the technology, implementing the technology tools and systems that align with your overall business strategy and goals. Fourth, on training staff, it should be very easily adaptable to all your staff's needs and how they will be able to help you to train your staff to use the tools as well. Number five, monitoring and optimizing. 
these technologies can ensure that it continue to meet the need of your organization and intervention. And sometimes this IT also means connecting to the right app developer, the people who can create a specific way that will help your company to grow. Now, in many aspects, we need to select IT automation, marketing system, and integration capability to ensure your company is not only sustainable, but also scalable. Number five, legal team. As you move closer to launching your product, it's essential to connect with attorneys who can protect your intellectual properties and to make sure that you have compliance with applicable laws and regulations. Navigating those steps are number one, what's your legal need, such as intellectual property, contract negotiation, regulatory compliance, and perhaps as simple as the NDA with people that you're in conversation with your company. Number two, hire attorney with expertise in healthcare laws. Some people who are very niched down in the compliance category with digital health, for example. Some people are very much into FDA approval, those type of uh, clinical trials. So knowing what type of area that you really need to help with, and perhaps you need to have different attorney for different things, such as a business attorney to set up the company and revenue side and versus a compliance attorney for that specific device process or biotech that you're creating. And number four is protecting your intellectual property. Make sure that your innovation is being trademarked, protected, copyrighted. Number five is stay up to date with changes in laws and regulations. We all know sometimes we wanted to be part of the policy changes versus other time we just need to keep up with all the regulations and whether it's yourself or dedicate a team member to continue to, to read up on the regulatory that will impact your work. Now, number six is accounting and finance. You need to establish in a way of ensuring profit first because managing your financial effectively can be a crucial thing to make financial risky decisions. And we wanted to always keep in mind a profit first accounting mindset is because if you continue to pour all the money into your business and you never see a penny back as a win, as a profit, then the motivation and momentum will continue to decrease as a founder as well. So you even have 1% or half percent a profit saved into a separate bank account of that a few dollars that still can help you to see I'm in it to build something that I can have a win and not constantly going to the lost. So to establish this profit first accounting and financial structure, number one, you need to create a budget and that prioritize profit and ensure that you have a financial resources to support your healthcare innovations. Number two is monitor expenses and cut as much expense as possible and understanding um, the in and out of all the expenses and compromise um, without compromise on the quality of your product and services. Number three, set financial goals that align with your overall business strategy and in short that you have resources to achieve those goals. Number four, creating a reserve fund. That's what I was mentioning. If you guys haven't read the book, Profit First, go read it. It's a good book for both businesses and for personal use as well. What that means is you cover the unexpected expenses and ensure you have financial stability to weather the challenges. So you will have different bank accounts. The main one that's paying bills, 
right? You expense going in and out. Then you have a profit account. Then you have a tax account, knowing that 30% you need to put it away because it's not your money, it's the government's money. And you have that emergency reserve fund for anything happening. And then you have another allocation fund, perhaps that's for specific employees or events, things that you need to invest back to the company for various things, um, for marketing or for um, branding, for PR, for HR side, um, whatever that main course is. And number seven, in the step is thinking about a strong operation. Effective operation are essential to success of any business. When I talk about, especially in the founder level, when you're just a solopreneur and still figuring out things, who to bring on your board advisees, but you also need to keep in mind on the top of the executive level you need to have at least three people right think about as a triangle it's the strongest shape so you as the top one of these position what the three are innovator someone who has a keen eye to find the gap and create a solution right a device a service a program a digital platform app and then you have someone who's really good at creating impact and income. Take that big idea, can strategize into something that people really want to buy, which means that person understand all aspects that we talked about, especially market research, go to market sales, whatnot. And then you have the top person, truly the CEO, the executive operational person who take the idea, take the foundation of how we can produce revenue into a set of plans then we can deploy then this operation will have three additional domain that separate into four different categories so of your full advisor board should be 12 members the three domain is culture and people means who you hire how do you hire alignment with the company how do you understand behavior of people? And then how do you create the right relationship to put the right talent in the right place? And then you have your communication visibility, your marketing, branding strategist to generate leads, your sales pipeline to how to actually close that deal, your PR to continue to build authority and bring new people to get to be aware of your work. And then lastly is your business strategists who are high level relationship builder. And that's where I usually sit is that how do you create a high level B2B relationship with these high net worth stakeholders so you no longer constantly going to the B2C around the individual that one person I can help, but talking to the people who has hundreds and thousands and millions of people that you can help. All right, the last thing is the structure and protection. And that's where you think about where your financial advisor, people help you get funding, uh, your legal team and compliance team, your chief of staff, project manager role, person who integrate everybody, right? Make sure people are all on the same page, getting moving forward and then uh, also your IT team in that to so have your structure and keep going. Then, um, so the operation side is all about identifying your workflow, what makes sense for you and not get overwhelmed and keep on track. And then optimize, think about how you can improve, whether it's a supply chain issue, whether it's ensure every material get delivery on time, and if it's a digital platform, make sure all the integration is up to date. And three is establishing the distribution channel. Who is gonna deliver these goods? Who's responding to customers' needs? And four is ensure quality assurance and services to meet the highest 
standard. Number five is monitor and optimize. We always wanted to see what works really well, and then you can double down on. And what doesn't work well, perhaps that's like a sidetrack. You have too many system tracking things. You need to cut some and streamline. Our last but not least is our human resources. We all know. The great resonation has been around for a while. We cannot do things all by ourselves. If you are the chief of everything, then you really are not delivering high quality of product and services. At the end of the day, you need to think as a stakeholder, not just a business owner that continue to pour back in. So essential to establish human resource processes on. How do you build your own executive board to help you? How do you build a manager level or、uh, technical workers to truly support you on every step of the way? And these are human resource professional not only can help you to find the right alignment for hire, but also develop handbooks, trainings, job search, and compensation packages. In the beginning, as a startup, perhaps you have to. Pay some in retainer, some in、uh, stocks, or some all in stocks, right? For people who trust you enough. So number one is creating those job description. Number two is recruit top talents. Number three is conduct through interviews, and number four establish employee benefits. Number five provide training and development so they can properly. Enable your employees to grow professionally. Number six, establish clear policy on your boundaries, your standards, behavior, and performance. Number seven, foster a positive work environment. And number eight, again, we need to monitor and optimize. So, establish effective human resource processes. You can consider all these factors at in. Conclusion to turning your healthcare idea into a sound innovation that can be impactful and profitable. It requires a comprehensive understanding and management of these eight different key business areas. And as I mentioned, there are actually twelve of major domains, but these eight are what you need. To start with, to have a strong market research, product design, IT infrastructure, secure funding, legal structure, financial support with profit first in mind, and operational, systematic way to carry out all these amazing work that you're building, and last but not least. Of a strong human resource team, so building this strong foundation in each of the eight domains will create that profitable and sustainable healthcare company. And these actionable steps can be a lot for some people, but we just need to understand we can break it down into something simple. It's also one step at a time. Don't try to eat a whole elephant with one bite. And we believe in your mission, and want to see you being successful. And if you're interested in learning more and have discussions, to tap into my network of experts that can have a more in-depth conversation in one or multiple area of those domains that we discuss. Happy to jump on the virtual coffee chat with you. Go to sabrinarombach.com/meeting. Looking forward to working together and learn all about your amazing work and passion, and let's turn your healthcare innovation into a reality. Thank you for tuning in to Providers Edge. We hope you found our latest episode insightful and valuable to your healthcare business. We would love to hear your feedback on the show and connect with you on LinkedIn. As a token of our appreciation, we offer a unique opportunity. Write a recommendation about our show on LinkedIn, and we'll give you a free media feature on one of our podcasts or TV shows. During this exclusive interview, you have the chance to share with us your 
mission and the impact you're doing with your business, ask any questions and gain visibility and credibility with influential partners to accelerate your mission and profitability. So don't hesitate, connect with Sabrina, myself on LinkedIn, leave a recommendation about our show and help us tailor our content while seizing this fantastic opportunity to elevate your healthcare business. We can't wait to hear from you.